Welcome to the Think Yourself Healthy podcast, where we challenge you to think differently about your approach to health and wellness. My name is Heather Duranja, and I'm excited to be here with you to take you on the journey from surviving to thriving. Hey, everybody. On today's episode of Think Yourself Healthy, I have Melissa Machat. She is an entrepreneur and founded Realign Coaching and Consulting to help empower and teach entrepreneurs how to elevate their mindset, accelerate sales, and make the perfect hire in their business so that they can scale with ease. With more than 10 years of experience, sales experience, over $100 million in volume sold in residential real estate, and more than eight years being educated by multiple coaching organizations and mentors, Melissa understands how to build and grow a business in any market and how your mind, mindset can control your outcome and results. Well, thank you so much, Melissa, for being here. It's such a pleasure to finally meet you and have you on the show. Thank you again so much for having me. So mindset. So you mean to tell me that being abundant has something to do with your mindset? Shocking, right? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So how did you, how did you discover this? What, what brought you down this path? It is a journey for sure. Uh, the short version is getting into real estate, coming from a theater and dance performing arts background, needed a real job, got my real estate license thinking that, you know, 2009 Las Vegas, bottom of the market, but I needed a career. So why not? Uh, and it really led me down this journey of building my own business, becoming an entrepreneur without even realizing that's, I didn't even know real estate was commission only. That's how young and naive I was and uh, started seeing success and built my business very quickly. Had no idea what I was doing. I kind of held on to that belief of I'm a theater major. Why are people going to take me seriously? They're going to trust a 24 year old kid to, you know, buy or sell a home. It, it just turned into this whole story of, am I good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? Uh, you know, I know what I need to do to grow my business. Not sure if anyone can relate. I know what I need to do, but I'm not taking action. I'm not doing it, or I'm not seeing it full. Like I'm not really living my potential. And that led me on a personal development journey of realizing I was completely miserable and anxious and letting the business control me. I was going 24 seven, had no life. And just really felt like I was failing. And so that led me to NLP or neuro-linguistic programming. And uh, that was about a year and a half ago and it completely changed my life. And I was empowered to share this message with as many people as possible because it's not that something was wrong with me or I wasn't good enough or I wasn't broken. I was actually in the wrong role. Right, yeah. So can you tell the audience a little bit about NLP and exactly what that means and what that entails in terms of being able to um, utilize that in everyday conversation as well as business um, adventures? Yes. Yeah, so NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, in the simplest form, it's the language of your mind, the language of your self-talk, the language of your thoughts and that actually does affect and control your behaviors and what you take action on, what you do not. The way we talk to ourselves, I think most people do not realize how harsh that is. And that was kind of a big eye opener for me was the language I use matters. And I didn't really understand that. And I didn't realize how horrible I was to myself as well. You could seem positive on the outside and you can seem like this you know, positive person, but on the inside, if you're beating yourself up all the time, you're, you're actually going to create a different reality than what, than what you would probably like. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I think that truth be told, NLP is something that has been used against us for a very, very long time. This isn't a new modality that's just, you know, recently come about. This is something that's been around for years and years and years. And one of the places that we see it being utilized very harshly is in marketing. Mm, yes. In marketing. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, these message that our subconscious brain receives from all of these, you know, commercials and, and 
basically it's programming what we're seeing, you know, programming um, really has an influence on our percept perceptive perception of self, that perspective of whom we are and what we can be. And so it really does shape and alter our, our belief of self and our potential. But most importantly, it really works against us in terms of limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. So I was right there with you. I had no idea how, like how mean I was to myself. I was so mean. I hated myself and I talked shit on myself all the time, never having a clue, being absolutely unaware, non-conscious of what that actual self-talk sounded like, which, you know, when I reflect back now and look back on it, it makes sense to me why I was so anxious, so depressed and so miserable in my being for such a long time because I was constantly reinforcing that just through my thoughts and the words that I use to describe self. And here's where it gets so crazy to me is that you actually prove yourself right. Yeah. So when you are thinking, maybe I'm not good enough, who are you to think you can do this? You suck at this. You know, why'd you eat that? I used to punish myself like food included, right? Like, why did you eat that? You know, better than that. That was stupid. And it's going through your head. You don't even stop to think like, hold on a second. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gaining weight. What an idiot. I know better than that. Like I got to go work harder. I got to go do this. Or when it comes to business, like maybe I am lazy. Maybe I'm not motivated. I need more accountability. Like I can literally hear in people's language, just them talking about their challenges. I'm like, you are creating this reality because you're actually trying to prove your unconscious. Right. 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 And it's, it's a, it's a spiral that if you're not paying attention and I love that you brought up like marketing and, and the messaging, because that's kind of a gift. I feel like I got power back in is now I can see it. Uh-huh. Now I'm taking an objective look and actually like, wow, they want me to believe this about myself. So I buy their product. Right. That's right. look at them go like with this hypnotic language and all these things. Whereas before you're just kind you almost become a victim to it with, cause you don't even realize it's happening. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, and and it's so prevalent right now, especially with this pandemic, and we're hearing all of these messages that we're not even aware what the intention behind them are. And it really does kind of uh, support and embrace this whole cancel culture that we're having as well, you know people aren't being encouraged to have their own belief systems and their own set of practices where really what I'm seeing happen is that there's this formulation of there's only one way that it can be done. And that's the, you know, the right way and the only way. And if you're not following along, then shame on you. And so every time I get in the car or I turn on, you know, a YouTube and I hear ads, it's all about, vaccination and social distancing and creating panic and fear amongst the masses, which is really unfortunate because so many people are falling victim to this. And what I've seen happen over the last year, especially in substance and recovery um, populations, the prevalence of depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts is so high. And it's because everywhere we look, everywhere we turn, there is this message reinforcing fear, reinforcing panic, anxiety amongst everyone. And it's intentional. It's very intentional. So, yeah. I agree. And I think this is actually, a because I actually grew up with severe anxiety and paranoia and all the things. And and a couple of things you mentioned that I just would love to to share real fast. Absolutely. I learned that like your brain filters information by either generalizing, deleting, or distorting because that's how fast things are happening and coming at us that we need this filter system so we can function. Otherwise there's too much and we'll shut down. And I think the most dangerous thing that people can do is generalize. Mm -hmm. And that is, this means that if you wear masks or don't wear masks or, and again, this isn't about the masks. This is just, if you do something, this is what that means about you as a person. To me, that is the most dangerous thing people could do because we are, we are associating Mm -hmm. now behavior with, with that. This is who you are. Right. 
And to me that it's just, it's this kind of scary time of like, hold on a second, let's time out. And actually coming from a calm centered balanced place, that's where the mindset work, that's where the inner work and all these things it's come from a calm centered balanced place, not a place of fear. So you can actually look at a situation and see all sides and that gives you your power. Yeah. That's what empowers you. It's yeah. not listening to what everybody's telling you. Right. No, absolutely. And you know, the tr- the truth is, is that, you know, these, these practices, these um, like NLP, this stuff has been around for a long time. It's just not something that we were aware for the most part. It existed, how we can utilize it in our everyday life, the government and you know, marketing and, and agencies of that nature that they've kind of kept this a secret from us. And I think we're in this really unique paradigm shift where people are starting to talk more about this. They're starting to recognize the correlation amongst certain practices that we're seeing prevalent here in society. And we're making each other aware. And then we're also fostering and encouraging the whole self-development, health, you know, taking responsibility for self, doing the inner work, doing the healing work, starting to retrain our brains so we're not falling victim to all of the marketing tactics that we've been, you know, and I, I kind of like to call it like we've all been under a spell, like a black magic spell that's been existing for a long period of time. And now the veil is starting to lift and we're starting to wake up and recognize the brainwashing through the use of intentional words and not have we just been brainwashed by others, but we continue to brainwash ourselves because that subconscious brain constantly needs to validate what its core belief is. And so, you know, I I reflect back on my journey and think about my negative self-talk and I was like, wow, I was in it, man. I was in it thick. And it's kind of hard to admit to yourself, (laughs) you know, it's like, oh shit, I've been abusing myself for decades, but you know, once you have that awareness, this is where compassion and grace has to come in. And we're not taught that either. (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like you've literally summed up like my mission and what I'm trying to do. Right. It's like wake people up and give you permission to not be so hard on yourself and give yourself some grace and space. And it just, it's so needed and we don't realize it. And now that I'm kind of, you know, on this awakening journey and path, I have these moments where I'm like, I was, I didn't realize how much I did hate myself. I was completely in denial about it. And then I was creating this like almost victim trap mentality cycle of proving how much I sucked. And it's like, Oh my, like looking at it now, I'm like, how did I not see it? And if anybody wants a a mental, you know, trip, like I just went home to visit family and my childhood home where I grew up and I found all the letters from high school. Cause you know, back then we wrote letters. We didn't have social media. I know I'm like, Oh, I'm that person now. Like back in my day, we didn't have, we had the internet, but we didn't have social media. And, um, I started reading all of these letters and it was, a eye-opening, jaw-dropping. I was so dark and so depressed and just all the things that I was like, I wanted to just go back and be like, it's going to be okay. If you could see where we are now, like you would never guess this. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. So if if you have any chance of going back to visit some of maybe those old journals and things, it was eye-opening experience. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Whenever I find mine, I'm always so mortified. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was, it was that too. (laughs) You know, it's like, oh, wow. Woo, Heather, man, I get it now. But um, yeah, you know, speaking of journaling, I, I think it's important to encourage audience members who are listening that anyone who is going through the process of really trying to take responsibility and accountability for how they're showing up in the world. Are they in alignment with their purpose? How can they start to make change to start creating different stories that, that are, you know, more empowering and will help them be in alignment with that purpose. They need to journal the process. You've got to get it down on paper and it's really phenomenal 
just in a matter of weeks, months to be able to flip back and see the immense amount of growth. Um, because this human experience is just a continuous learning journey. It's never going to end. We're never going to be fully healed. We're never going to be X, Y, Z. And unfortunately, that's where we set ourselves up for failure because we have this expectation, right? That there's an end point that I just got to do X to get to Z and and, and the truth is, it is, just doesn't work that way. So we've got to start creating new norms with loosening up these unrealistic expectations, um, inviting compassion and grace, less, credit, less criticism and judgment, and not just with others, but with ourselves. You know, we have so much room for improvement um, so tell me, tell me a little bit, what are your thoughts about this and, and how did some, maybe some of these practices help support you on your awakening journey and, and your journey to abundance and prosperity? I love everything you just said about it because it, it literally this, I hear, I'm on like major reflection mode right now, if you can't tell, because this is again, it. I started going back through old journals and we're talking even just last year and the year before. And I, I'm not going to say that I am a consistent journaler. That's something Me I've either. been working on. Yeah. So I just want to put it that way. And I also want to mention that when people used to tell me you have to enjoy the journey, it's part of the process, mm -hmm. enjoy the journey. I, it, that used to piss me off beyond belief. Cause I was like, the journey sucks. Like this isn't fun. I hate this. Like, when am I going to get there? I want to get over there because when I get there, everything's going to magically, you know, be great again. And that was part of the lesson of life was if you, you need to figure out how to be present and be happy now with what you have and someday may never come. And if you're waiting for someday when I have all these things, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be satisfied. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Like you right. said. So I'd say journaling has been a great way to get these thoughts out of my head and kind of have this honest, like it, it was a place for me to really be honest about how I felt, how much things sucked, whatever it was, it gave me a place to almost like vent and get it out. And I'd say the one thing that really started to change everything. And I've heard people say it. And again, I knocked it because that's, I don't know. I like to resist things, I think, before I finally try it myself, which was gratitude. Mm -hmm. And it was part of a challenge of, can you write, you know, five things you're grateful for today? And then the next day, can you write five things you didn't already say? Mm -hmm. And just every day, keep adding to it. And it made you actually stop to think. I remember like vividly, there was a moment where I was like, wow, you know, I'm actually grateful for, for running water, mm -hmm. uh, where I live, we're actually on like a community. Well, I think we like lost water for a day. And I was like, you know, I totally took that for granted. Like living in Las Vegas in the summer, AC went out. I'm really grateful for working air conditioning and electricity. And when you don't have it, you are quickly reminded about something that you didn't even think up twice about. It was just, of course we have AC, like how could you not, right? Yeah. Yeah. Until you don't have it. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a, a, a stopping point, kind of like a pattern interrupt, right? Yeah. Well, and I think that we can use this whole pandemic that we've experienced over the last year to really be able to embrace gratitude. Um, I know myself yesterday, I took a walk down to the beach and I remember at the beginning of quarantine last year, trying to go to that very same beach and not being allowed to go on the beach. And yesterday I had a whole new sense of appreciation and respect for being able to be out in nature because there was a point where we didn't have access to that. So I think that for anyone listening, um, doing an inventory over this last year could really be a great way to start with getting you into a state of gratitude. What were the things you were taking for granted prior to us getting locked up into our homes and having a lot of um, the stuff that we you know, utilize on a daily basis taken away? I think that's a great place to start for those who are so deep in that self-hate and don't know where to begin with starting to find things to be grateful in their lives, um, kind of scaling it out and looking at it on a broader, broader picture can be beneficial. Yes. And there's one more piece to it that also kind of leveled that up 
uh-huh. if anybody wants to take on the, the next step to this or a new challenge, which was writing down a win for the day. Mm-hmm. And that actually, I think gratitude got me into a place of, of getting out of my own, my own funk, but having to figure out like, what did I win at today? Cause for the longest time I was like, I couldn't, I I didn't feel like I wanted anything. I felt like there wasn't one. And it really forced me to be like, hold on a second. Like I woke up, I'm breathing. I got out of bed. That's a win. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Cause a lot of people have a really hard time embracing wins, especially when they're so deep in their anxiety and depression. They're like, man, I didn't even want to get out of bed today. Well, guess what you did. And that in itself is a win. You know, you, you put one foot in front of the other. Um, I, I know for me, one of the things that I am most grateful for is having the ability to redirect my thoughts when I have awareness that they aren't serving me in Mm -hmm. how I want to feel in that moment. And I practice gratitude for that all the time. I, you know, I'll be driving in my car and usually my brain really starts being overly active in the car when I'm by myself and I'll start recognizing some stories coming into play. And then once I have that awareness, then it's like, okay, (laughs) we're going to have to have a chat. (laughs) Let's see how we can make this a little bit better serving and really start diving in. And I ask myself, you know, where's this coming from? Where, you know, where did, what, what triggered this? What was even, because a lot of times we're not even aware what the actual trigger was. It could be something we heard on the radio. It could be something we saw in passing. It could be a conversation we overheard others talking about. And we didn't even realize how we were internalizing that information and how that information was triggering perceptions of our, our, our own self. Yes. And it's uh, so good. And that skill, I'm going to call it a skill, that skill of being able to say like, hold on a second, where did this come from? Kind of analyze what triggered me in the first place. I love that you said that because it gives you a moment to almost stop the spiral. It gives you a moment to say like, hold on a second, where's this, where, where did this even come from? And when you can actually like take a step back and look at it, sometimes I'm like, it's so simple where it's like, wow, I haven't eaten in a while and I'm like getting hangry and I just need a snack. Sometimes it's a little deeper than that, where it's like, you know, the words that you just used to me really kind of cut deep. And this is why, and I used, I might've, I'm going to say, I might've been a little reactive, you know, towards my husband or maybe some other people in my life. If you ask him, he'll be like, uh, yeah. Um, so I found that like, just by taking this pause, really gave me a moment to just say like, wow, this actually has nothing to do with you. I reacted because of this. Right. And let me, let me sit with this for a moment and figure out like what's coming up for me because it did trigger something and you're, we're human. We're going to have triggers. The, the key is not to overly react to them. It's giving yourself space so you can actually work through it. All right. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times people don't recognize the blessing that is actually occurring in these moments of awareness where we're asking ourselves, what was that trigger and what was said or or what was the stimulant? Because ultimately this gives us a whole nother opportunity where we can learn what our actual needs are and how to start expressing boundaries, boundaries with others, as well as boundaries with ourselves. And if we don't give ourselves the freedom to recognize that sometimes our thoughts aren't always serving us and to get curious about that, Um, we'll never have that full enlightenment and understanding of who we are at the core and how we need to be supported and to be able to show up and ask for that support. Absolutely. And part of the job of whether you want to call it your ego, your unconscious, your subconscious mind, whatever words you use, it's all of them. (laughs) It's all of them. Right. And, and the number one job is, is survival. It's to keep us safe. And so I find that when I'm leveling up or I'm about to step into a new, like literally just declared, okay, I'm ready. I'm stepping into this new role and I'm, I'm going all out. And the next day it's like all this fear, all this doubt, all these waves of emotions. And I'm like, what? I just thought I had this figured out. Where did you come from? And I realized, oh, this is that new level, new, new devil. I've heard some mentors call it where 
the fear is coming up. Like, you sure you really want to do that? Who do you think you are? And it really is to keep us protected and safe and in our comfort zone. And when I can see that happening now, instead of letting that take me down some spiral of what was I thinking? That was ridiculous. I could never do that. Right. Like all that doubt. Now it's almost like a, Oh, I see. You just came out to remind me you want to keep me safe. I appreciate you. This is not a survival moment. I really, really appreciate you're trying to protect. It's like what you said, have a conversation with yourself and it makes such a difference when you can see it. Yeah. And, and that's what we have to do because that cognitive dissonance that you're speaking to, it's where our brain is trying to hold two opposing beliefs at the same time. We have this core belief that we're not worthy and deserving, that we inherit it. It's, it was never an original thought on our, on our own. Somewhere along the line, we experienced some sort of trauma that made us feel unworthy and undeserving, right? And so then we've got this other thought that is super exciting and empowering and it's so, there's so much potential and the two come together and the subconscious is like, (laughs) oh, we've never been there. We don't know what that looks like. That isn't safe. Why don't we just come back over here? And so if we're not aware that this is actually occurring, then we have no ability to intervene and start interrupting the pattern to start creating new stories and allow for it to eventually become a new default subconscious state. But the problem is, is that so many people are unaware that this is even occurring. They don't interrupt that pattern. And because we have so much resistance around empowering ourselves through self-talk, we lose the opportunities to retrain the brain. So good. And we think that that's truth. Mm -hmm. Like we believe these thoughts and fears and limiting beliefs. I I just thought that was normal and this is just how it is. And and I see it in so many people where it's almost like they they've given up to, to even thinking that they can change it. Right. Or that they can pattern interrupt it or that they can rewrite the program. Yeah. And, you know, I personally feel that this is where we all have responsibility because we, these are inherited belief systems that were never ours to begin with. And it's our responsibility once we start to have awareness that these perceptions are not serving us in, in the way that we desire that we have to, it is literally our number one job to break this genetic habit of going to that negative self-talk and limiting ourselves from actually achieving our full potential. I know for myself, I grew up in an environment with lots and lots of limiting beliefs, scarcity mode being one of the, the, the biggest. And it's funny because just today I had someone reach out to me and they, you know, in this conversation, one of the questions they asked me well, since we're a new company, will you negotiate your rates with us and catch, you know, catch us a break? The old Heather would have been like, oh God, I guess I'm charging too much. Yeah. What, what was I thinking? There's no way I could ask for that hourly rate. Like that was just stupid. Oh my God. And the, and the new Heather's like, oh, absolutely not. And here are all the reasons why. And I had no problem listing them out and being able to be very firm in that choice and not second guess myself and say, oh, should, because here's the deal. In the event they decide not to give me the contract because they can't afford me, then I know that that is for my highest and greatest good. That is an account that is not in alignment with probably seeing the value behind the work that I actually do. Therefore, it's probably going to create a lot of unfortunate moments where I'm going to be utilizing energy that I don't necessarily have Mm -hmm. to make it all work. And in the end, guess who gets to be the victim? Me. Guess who gets to complain? Me. I am not in alignment with that anymore. You know, I, I no longer support that mentality and uh, and victim victim mentality. So um, it's very empowering. Yes. When you start I, it, to recognize and have that ability. It. I was about to say, like, I'm empowered just hearing you say it. I'm like, yes, that's exactly it. Because we, 
again, whoever taught us that, whoever no taught that, that our, our value and our self-worth is tied to so many things, especially being an entrepreneur, right? And you're let like, me, oh, I didn't know all this stuff's coming out. Like, where did that? Yeah. Let me give you it. one of my personal favorite examples of my, yeah. my programming starting at a very early age. So I got diagnosed with a learning disability at a very, very early age, about kindergarten. I started literally the day after my fourth birthday, I started kindergarten. I was not developmentally ready, nor did I have an environment that could cultivate the extra energy and effort that needed to go into that. So as a result of this, I get deemed learning disability. I'm the stupid girl, I'm, I'm the dumb girl, right? And, um, I, I love my grandma. She's an amazing woman. I can't imagine life without her. However, she was one of the individuals who programmed in me at a very early age of where my core value and self-worth was by just this one simple statement, Heather, it's okay that you're not smart. You're pretty. And because you're pretty, you'll always find a man to take care of you right? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so I believed this for a very long time, a very, very long time. And then when I wasn't finding the man, the right man to take care of me, you know, it was just further validation that I wasn't worthy and deserving of living a good, healthy, loving quality of life. And so um, for a long time, I never realized how much that one comment shaped the perception of who I thought I could be and what I was going to actually pursue in life. College wasn't even an option for me. I never even considered it. I just assumed that I was dumb. I would just graduate high school and then I would find some man who wanted a trophy wife and I would get pregnant and I would raise a family and we just, you know, I'd have the, that perfect picket fence White House story, right? wrong. <laughs> Imagine that it didn't work out that way. Shocking. And congratulations to you for breaking that right programming and all the things. And it, again, no one said the, the inner work has to be like fun and you just wake up one day and you're like, Oh, that's what's been shaping my life. Okay. I can let it go now. Like it takes know. some time. Here's the funniest part about, well, you know, none of this is funny. I can, I can look back and, and laugh at it now because I have an understanding and can connect all of the dots. But in 2018 is where I actually had the awareness of my grandmother's behaviors and statements towards me, her and myself both went and did this really intense uh, personal development course. Okay. So we were at a weekend retreat, hardcore, you know, 16 hour days of just diving into the traumas and the therapies. And so we formed these little groups and we're in our little groups and I was in a different group than my grandmother and the facilitator, the facilitator came over and asked my group what their perception of me was. And they said all of these amazing things. They're like, oh my God, she's so smart. She's so intelligent. She's so goal, goal oriented. And I'm over here like squirming inside going, what? Those are not me. Like, what are you talking about? And so the facilitator starts asking questions and he's like, so uh, how many degrees do you have? You know, and I'm like, well, and he's like, how many more do you have to have until you feel, you know, you're good enough. And I was like, I don't know. And then he, he called over to my grandma and he made a statement and he said, you know, grandma, do you think Heather is an intelligent woman? And my grandmother's response was, well, she makes really poor decisions when it comes to men. And I literally had this light bulb moment. I was like, oh, you trained me to believe all of my worth was in the man. And now you're saying that I don't make good choices. And it was just like this, holy shit, light bulb moment that connected all the dots and made me realize why I kept repeating patterns. Oh, <laughs> that we're not serving me. <laughs> gosh. And the fact that she was there with you and like, what are the odds? Cause most yeah. times they're, 
not in our lives anymore. They're gone or whatever it may be. So what, what, a, yeah. oh, I can only part of it. imagine. It was on my actual birthday. I want to say it was my 42nd birthday or something. Yeah. Just total moment of awareness. Like, wow. Okay. I've got some work to do. <laughs> What a gift. I love you said that earlier too, right? Like what a gift and a lesson in a box that, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it, and that's really all it takes. It is, I'm in, look, I'm not diminishing anybody's trauma. Some people do go through some horrific things. And if you didn't, that also doesn't mean it wasn't as imp- like impactful. Right. I found that I almost like diminished, like, well, my childhood wasn't that bad. So why am I feeling this way? And my parents are amazing and they loved me and supported me. So why am I so, it was almost like I was like trying to diminish that, like I could even have any trauma. And I think that was a huge piece of this was, it is what shaped us. Yeah. And I'm so glad that. that you're addressing that because there is such a stigma around what we can classify, you know, as is having, having some challenging moments. And truth is, is that these challenging moments don't have to be super traumatic experiences, um, not diminishing any of those for anyone. But, you know, the truth is, is our subconscious brain could potentially translate a moment where you just wanted to be picked up and held by your mother and she was busy doing dishes and it was unsafe for her to reach down and grab you. And you, your subconscious brain, translated that information as rejection. Yes. And now you've got this core belief from a two-year-old that didn't get picked up in this one moment as you are not worthy and deserving. You are a rejected being and then you're going to literally seek out evidence to keep validating and proving over and over to yourself that you aren't good enough, that you're not worthy and deserving. You're not the six figure earner. You're not in the perfect relationship. You don't have the, you know, X, Y, Z. And we, we can take, we can take the same energy that we're utilizing to validate the disempowering belief and we can start putting it into empowering ways to start shifting that story and creating a new default state. But most people will not do it. Mm-mm. Most people well, will not do it. They don't realize it's- that they're benefiting from the story. Yeah. And that that's key is that whether the story is good or bad, it serves a purpose. It serves yes. a purpose and our, our subconscious ca- brain cannot differentiate good or bad. It only knows safe and alive. So if we don't have the ability to take a step back, get really present with ourselves and start recognizing what the fuck is actually going on in here, what is actually going on in here and how often, <laughs> how often is it happening and where can I start taking accountability and responsibility now that I have awareness to start creating a new dialogue, a new self, a new self-talk. That was literally the best thing that ever happened to me. And for me, it was very challenging. I, you know, I was told, do positive affirmation. It's going to change your life. So I'd stand in front of that mirror and I would be like, you're so smart, Heather. And then I'd be like, you fucking liar, liar, you liar. You know, I just, I didn't believe it. And so I kept yeah. searching for the stuff to not believe it. And for me personally, the way that I was able to break that cycle was to pull out a picture of my eight-year-old self and try to say the same things to her. And when I'd pull that picture out of little Heather, who had all these hopes and dreams, who had so much love and compassion in her heart, and I try to say, you know, you're stupid, I can't do it. And then Mm. all I can think is really positive, amazing things about the hopes and dreams of that inner child that resides within all of us. The, The inner child is truly the gatekeeper to our happiness. So no matter what age we're at, we have to start honoring and enforcing a new dialogue that is giving that inner child what they did not receive that created so much trauma in these limiting beliefs and perceptions. Uh, you said it 
perfectly. And this is also why I have a gripe on positive affirmations, because if you're saying something and you don't actually believe it, you do start this internal dial. It's like, let me, let me put, you know, fuel to the fire. Like you already have limiting thoughts about yourself that you didn't realize. Let me start some positive affirmations. so I can tell myself all the things I'm not. And it just, uh, uh, agreed. So for everyone who's listening and they're like, okay, shit, this is me. I've got some work to do. Hey, first and foremost, do not feel guilty or shameful. Let that shit go. You're aware now. Okay. It's been serving a purpose up to this point, but you got to ask yourself, is it serving the purpose I desire? So for everyone who's listening, just had their aha a moment and they're like, oh shit, I got some work to do. What are four steps that these people can take to get back to actions? Kind of uh, share your secrets with us. Yes. Okay. So these are my four favorite questions that do apply regardless if it's anxiety, if it's that negative spiral, whatever it may be, a trigger, by the way, like all the things we've been talking about. And it really is taking a moment and reflecting. And the first question, I actually ask myself these out loud because the answers come up. It's amazing when you slow down long enough to listen to yourself. Uh, the first question is, what is causing me to feel this way? Kind of we talked about before. Quick check-in. What's causing me to feel this way? Second, what outcome am I avoiding? What is it? It could be a fear of success, fear of failure. To me, so much is packed in that question. What outcome are you really avoiding? Now, we're human. We are programmed to to focus on what we don't want in the negative. So number three is where we start switching it back to the positive. What do you actually want? And I know it's a really simple question, but we're normally not asked that. No one's like, so what do you want out of your life, right? Or what do you want in this moment? And I think also to that point that most people measure that in in materialistic means. And so there's a lot of people out there who have everything they've ever wanted, but they still don't feel whole. They still don't feel complete. So we we also have to think about in terms of um, what it is that we want emotionally, physically, mentally, not just materialistically, what are these things that we actually desire? I know for myself, freedom, freedom Mm -hmm. is one of my biggest wants, you know, and, and as an entrepreneur, that's something that I've uh, been able to cultivate a little bit more freedom in my life um, with the way that I've designed and structured my business. So I think it's important for people to think outside of the box in terms of just the materialistic means, because that's what we've been conditioned to do. I mean, come on, capitalist America. Hello. No, I'm so glad you said that. Because when I say like, what do you want? I am talking like emotionally your life. If you want freedom, okay, what does that look like to you? What does your schedule look like? I mean, if it's I want to be healthy. Okay. Well, like what about being healthy? Is it fit, like feeling a certain way? Is it having energy? Right. So this is a deeper right. question than just like on the surface. Well, I want a million dollars. Like, no, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking, what do you actually like want out of your life? Why do you want that money? Why do you want these achievements? And then the fourth question is what is the first step to make it happen? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's getting you out of that. Like, I don't want this. It's not working. It like I've, I've, this works with, I've done this with health and fitness. I've done this with business, right? It doesn't matter. It, the, it's amazing what comes out of like, what's the first step to make it happen? Because now you're dealing with the real issue, Mm -hmm. not what you thought the issue was. Right. And I think also just to take this a little step further, this is where we also have to release our attachment to outcomes and expectation, having that certainty, because more often than less, no matter how much we've problem solved and tried to devise a foolproof uh, plan to be able to determine what that outcome is going to look like, it never goes that way. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, life is ebb and flow. It's shifting all of the time. And so when we get so attached to these outcomes, that's actually the subconscious brain being attached to self-sabotage to prove that we aren't worthy and deserving. Well, it wasn't the outcome I wanted. 
it, it wasn't the outcome I wanted. So I can't celebrate it. You know, I, I know for myself, I definitely got caught up in that story often, many times. And then again, shifting it back to gratitude allows us that opportunity to recognize, okay, well, this isn't the way I thought it was going to go, but this is still just as good. And I can celebrate X, Y, Z. My personal mantra is this, is that in life, everything is either a lesson or a blessing or both. And it's a choice. We get to choose to approach it from that perspective. Which I is love that. And powerful. I love it. It's a lesson or a blessing or it could be both. You choose. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. And and I typically try to find both. I'm like, okay, so here was the lesson and here's the blessing. And I'm grateful for having both. Like, all right, I get to check off one of the boxes for things that I needed to learn and prove to myself while being here in this human experience. I don't have to come back and do that one over again. Thank God. (laughs) So true. Oh my gosh. Yes. Because the lessons will keep coming back until you actually learn them. So again, give yourself some grace that if things are repeating, it is for a reason. It's an opportunity that maybe you are not seeing the bigger picture or the lesson quite yet. And, and fortunately or unfortunately, it might keep happening until you, until you do. I know in my own personal experience, typically the lessons would just get harder and more devastating and more traumatic and they get a little louder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get louder. Absolutely. I say that all the time. If you're so not listening, you're like, they- okay, I get it. And another thing that I find is also um, that when we aren't in purpose, when we're not in that flow and when we're not on mission, you know, with, with serving that, that purpose, that it will manifest energetically in our physical bodies, contributing to the anxiety and the depression and the other physical ailments that we see on a daily that the doctors can't explain what's going on with you, you know? And, and that's where it gets really confusing for a lot of beings is because they're like, but I, I know these things are happening to me, but there's no evidence to prove and diagnose uh, what it is, but it's, it's literally our, um, our, our brain showing us, Hey man, you're not in alignment. I should say it's more of that intuitive piece connected with the brain because we literally can manifest anything if we just put enough effort into it. (laughs) It's so true. And that's, yes, It does. It all manifests and comes out some way. So you just decide how you would like it to. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, Melissa, I think I could talk to you all day. I think we have lots and lots of stories that we could share and, um, you know, really create a lot of amazing dialogue around. Um, So tell me, tell the audience where they can find more information and learn more about you. So Instagram is where I probably spend too much time. It's at Melissa Machat. Come find me. I'll, you know, DM conversations, questions around this. Uh, I love, I love talking these types of conversations. So thank you again for going there with me, right? It's so much fun. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) Well, this is where, this is, you know, this is where we have an opportunity. Um, I know for myself that this podcast, it, it was a passion project that allowed for me to really expand upon my own healing journey. And through doing that work, it also was a way to help support others in their own healing journey. So again, it's, it's about shifting perspective. You know, when I get to pull up my podcast schedule and see, I have X amount of interviews that I get to record that week. I get excited about it. I'm like, ah, shit, you know, there's three more hours of my time that I'm not getting paid for. I'm like, oh my God, I get to create amazing content with other like-minded individuals who are here on the same mission, you know, because the reality is we can never hear it enough. And We can never hear it enough, many different ways for it to actually finally drive home and and really, really connect with uh, wanting us to take that inspired action. So Melissa, thank you so much. I will make sure that I 
attach all of your contact information in the show notes so they can find you easily. And um, I believe that you have a quiz. Tell me about this quiz they can take. Yes. So the quiz is basically where are you stuck in your business or what is the next step for you to grow your business? It's nine questions. It really gives a deep dive of where you're currently at, what might be holding you back, what might be getting in your way. So if you want just a simple, quick way to get kind of an idea of what might be missing or what is next, uh, and I'm all about action. So depending on your answer, you will get Act, like tactical action items that give you exactly what to do to start moving forward to get to that next level. And that's awesome. melissachat.com slash quiz. Awesome. Well, I will link that as well. So for everyone listening, it's time to go get uncomfortable, go take that quiz, see what your fate is. So you can take some inspired action steps to get more in alignment with the life you desire to live. Well, Melissa, thank you so much. This was truly a pleasure and I look forward to staying in contact and supporting you. And if there's anything I can do specifically to help support you, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. You are awesome, my friend. I really appreciate your time today. Um, so many gold nuggets. Oh my gosh, some really good stuff. I believe... I believe that that this should release next Monday. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to um, release this next Monday, but if for some reason that is not true, then I will reach out to you and let you know what the date is, but I will give you everything that you will need in the event that you want to reshare and promote this to your audience. And like I said, If there's anything I can do to support you and your career, your journey, personally or professionally, please do not hesitate to reach out. I would love to stay connected and to continue to learn more about you. Same to you. This, I think we could literally talk all day long. Absolutely. I'm curious. What month are you born? August. I I knew it. What day? 21st. Okay. I knew it. I was like, she's a Leo. I can feel it. I'm a Leo as well. I'm the fifth. But I okay. knew it. I was like, we're, we're too much alike. I, I had a, do you know what your human design is? Uh, yes. Manifesting generator. Okay. I'm a projector. So when you were talking about talking out loud, I was like, oh, that so resonates with me because everything I need to hear comes through my own voice, but it must be verbalized out loud in order for it to, to connect. I'm just getting into all the human design stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is a whole nother level. I didn't realize. And I have to ask you too, did you, did you do landmark? Is that where you went with your? No, um, actually my assistant who works for me, her passion has been human design her whole, like for as long as I can remember. And mm-hmm. so a couple of years ago, I think it was like 2018, <laughs> she kept shoving it down my throat. She was like, so I just want you to know that because of your design, your human design, you <laughs> can understand this because I used to get really frustrated with myself. Um, yeah. I, I channel and when I'm channeling, I don't remember a freaking thing I said. So as soon as I wrap up saying some bomb ass statement, someone will be like, could you repeat that? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't know what I said. Yeah. And I would judge myself. I would, and it would always go back to that learning disability. Oh no, it's my comprehension. And, you know, and so I would always use that against me. And so once I was able to understand that, no, that's just part of my human design. That's the way that I communicate. Um, I was able to show up with more compassion and grace and really embrace it. And so now I record everything that I think could potentially be beneficial if I need to go back and reference it. Otherwise I'm like one and done. That's why I got a podcast. You can go back and listen to it. <laughs> Love it. It's so good. But yeah, I'm going to find you on Instagram and whenever it comes out, I'll definitely share it. And awesome. whenever I can support you too. Just oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Well, it's been yeah. truly a pleasure and um, my best to you. I hope you have an amazing, blessed rest of your Monday and I look forward to staying connected. Me too. Thank you so much. And same to you. All the love friend. Have an amazing evening. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Think Yourself Healthy podcast. 
Make sure you leave a review and let me know what you think. I love reading your feedback. Come hang out with me on Instagram at Heather Duranja. And don't forget to take a screenshot that you're listening to the podcast and tag me. I love to share it. See you on the next episode.